From 1877 until the civil rights movement of the 1950s, the Jim Crow laws enforced racial segregation in the American South. Originating from a derogatory minstrel routine, these laws mandated the separation of whites and persons of color in public transportation, schools, parks, cemeteries, theaters, and restaurants. The famous separate but equal decision in Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896 upheld these laws, but in 1954, Brown v. the Board of Education declared segregation in public schools unconstitutional. This decision paved the way for overturning other forms of Jim Crow legislation. The term Jim Crow law emerged in 1884, describing laws that enforced racial segregation. It originated from a song and dance routine called Jump Jim Crow, performed by a white actor in blackface in 1828. The phrase evolved into a derogatory term for African Americans. Southern legislatures enacted Jim Crow laws at the end of the 19th century, imposing racial segregation. These laws became synonymous with systemic discrimination against African Americans. During the Reconstruction era, following the abolition of slavery in the United States, federal laws provided civil rights protections for freedmen and African Americans. However, in the 1870s, Democrats gradually regained power in Southern legislatures through the use of violent paramilitary groups like the Ku Klux Klan. These groups disrupted Republican organizing, drove out Republican officeholders, and intimidated black voters through lynching and violence. The Compromise of 1877, a corrupt bargain, marked a turning point. It resulted in the withdrawal of federal troops from the South, allowing white Democrats to regain political control. These Redeemer governments enacted Jim Crow laws officially segregating the country's population. These laws were a manifestation of authoritarian rule, specifically targeting African Americans. States passed restrictive voter registration and electoral rules to suppress black people's voters. This led to a significant decrease in political participation by African Americans and many poor white people. Between 1890 and 1910, most former Confederate states disenfranchised the majority of black people and tens of thousands of poor white people through tactics like poll taxes, literacy tests, and residency requirements. While some illiterate white people were temporarily exempted through grandfather clauses, the measures did not relieve most black people. As a result of these discriminatory measures, voter turnout dropped dramatically throughout the South. For example, in Louisiana, registered black voters decreased from thousands to a mere fraction of eligible black men. Similar disenfranchisement occurred in North Carolina and other Southern states, eradicating black voters from the rolls. The political representation of African Americans vanished, and their growing middle class was hindered. In addition to political disenfranchisement, public institutions such as schools and libraries were also affected by segregation. Public schools for black children received consistently lower funding than white children. Libraries for African Americans were underfunded and scarce until the early 20th century. Even during the Progressive Era, when formal segregation was becoming customary, African Americans faced significant obstacles in accessing education and resources. The discriminatory voting laws extended to sports and recreation, contributing to the segregation of African Americans in these areas. The 1912 presidential election further marginalized African Americans as they were effectively disenfranchised in the South, while literacy requirements and poll taxes disproportionately affected poor and illiterate individuals, particularly black Americans. Woodrow Wilson, the first Southern-born president of the post-Civil War period, promoted segregation. Despite opposition from African-American leaders and white progressive groups, his administration introduced segregation in federal offices. Wilson appointed segregationist politicians and believed that racial segregation was in the best interest of both black and white Americans. The rise of residential segregation laws in Texas and the support for excluding African Americans from various aspects of public life found backing from the Republican Lily White movement as well. 
The Jim Crow laws imposed racial segregation in every aspect of daily life in various states. Examples included separate facilities for education, transportation, housing, hospitals, restaurants, and theaters. The laws prohibited interracial marriage and mandated separate bathrooms, waiting rooms, and entrances. They even dictated separate seating arrangements in public venues. These laws aim to enforce racial discrimination and maintain white supremacy. In summary, the origin of Jim Crow laws can be traced back to the gradual erosion of civil rights protections for African Americans during the Reconstruction. The Compromise of 1877, along with the resurgence of white Democrats, led to the enactment of Jim Crow laws which segregated the population based on race. Combined with voter suppression tactics, these laws disenfranchised African Americans. They marginalized them in various areas of society, including politics, education, and public facilities. In 1875, the equal treatment for all individuals in public places. However, it had limited impact due to a Supreme Court ruling that deemed parts of the act unconstitutional. The influence of white Southern Democrats in Congress hindered the passage of further civil rights legislation until 1957. However, early attempts to challenge segregation emerged. In 1877, Rev. W. H. Hurd filed a complaint against the Georgia Railroad for discriminatory practices, but the company justified its actions by claiming to provide separate but equal accommodations. Louisiana passed a law in 1890 requiring segregated railroad facilities. A diverse group of citizens in New Orleans formed an association to fight against the law, and they selected Homer Plessy to challenge it. Plessy, who was of mixed race, was arrested for refusing to leave the whites only train car. As a result of the Citizens Committee of New Orleans Supreme Court appeal, separate but equal was upheld as constitutional in the infamous Plessy v. Ferguson ruling. The ruling perpetuated racial discrimination for the next 58 years. In 1908, an attempt to introduce segregated streetcars in the Capitol was defeated by Congress. Racism and defenses of Jim Crow in the U.S. were rooted in white Southerners' resentment after the end of slavery and their desire to maintain social dominance. They justified segregation as protection for African Americans, fueled by scientific racism and negative stereotypes. World War II and the post-war era saw increased challenges to segregation with the term racism introduced by Justice Frank Murphy in a Supreme Court opinion. Civil rights activism gained momentum, fueled by demonstrations and legal battles. After Truman's order to end discrimination in the armed services, education in the South was desegregated. As the civil rights movement progressed, Southern states countered with alternative resistance measures. Historian William Chafe explores defensive techniques developed by the African American community to navigate Jim Crow. These efforts, known as walking the tightrope, subtly challenged white-imposed sanctions. Institutions like black churches and all-black communities played pivotal roles in community building and inspiring change. The public school segregation issue reached a turning point in the civil rights movement when the Supreme Court declared it unconstitutional in the famous Brown v. the Board of Education case. The racial integration of collegiate sports teams also became a focal point, leading to social transformation. Significant occasions like the Montgomery bus boycott were spurred by prominent civil disobedience activities like the refusal of Rosa Parks to give up her bus seat. Protests, legal challenges, and legislative actions eroded the Jim Crow system. When the United States finally abolished legal segregation, it was recognized by passing two landmark laws in 1964 and 1965, which were the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. These acts resulted from a complex convergence of factors between 1954 and 1965. In Brown v. the Board of Education, public school segregation along racial lines was found to be against the law by the Supreme Court. However, the massive resistance movement made it difficult to enforce this verdict throughout the South. Massive demonstrations and media coverage helped propel the civil rights movement. Organizations like the SCLC and Martin Luther King Jr. were the driving forces behind it. 
Birmingham, Alabama became a focal point as protesters faced brutal repression, which sparked national outrage. President John F. Kennedy threatened federal intervention, prompting compromise and increased support for civil rights. Kennedy's assassination led President Lyndon B. Johnson to champion civil rights legislation in memory of his predecessor. Two landmark pieces of legislation were enacted during this time, guaranteeing equal access to public accommodations, desegregation of schools, and the end of discrimination in businesses. The South initially resisted, but widespread acceptance followed the signing of the laws. The activism and tragic events, including the mysterious vanishing of three Mississippi civil rights activists and the attack on peaceful marchers in Selma, Alabama, further propelled the push for voting rights legislation. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 abolished discriminatory barriers to voting. It provided federal oversight in areas with historically low minority voter turnout. While progress has been made, challenges and legal battles continue to ensure equal access to the democratic process. Jim Crow laws heavily impacted African-American life in the United States, forcing segregation and leading to widespread discrimination. This contributed to the Great Migration, as African Americans sought better opportunities in northern, midwestern, and western cities. African American athletes faced significant hurdles during the Jim Crow era, with limited access to organized sporting competitions. However, trailblazers like Jack Johnson, Joe Lewis, and Jesse Owens achieved prominence in boxing and track and field, challenging racial barriers. In baseball, the color line prevented black players from participating in the major leagues until Jackie Robinson broke the barrier in 1947, paving the way for full integration in the 1960s. Black-owned businesses experienced growth during the early 20th century, particularly in urban areas. These businesses relied heavily on resources provided by Booker T. Washington's National Negro Business League. Cities like Atlanta and Durham became centers for black business, thriving in industries such as tobacco manufacturing and cotton mills. Anti-miscegenation laws, which prohibited interracial marriage, were passed by several states. However, the Supreme Court's 1967 decision in Loving v. Virginia ruled such legislation unconstitutional. The court affirmed that the freedom to marry a person of another race is a fundamental individual right protected by the Constitution. Jury trial requirements varied among states, with some allowing non-unanimous verdicts. People thought this was a holdover from Jim Crow rules because it made it harder for people of color to be heard on juries. However, the jury in the Supreme Court has recently concluded that a majority vote is needed to find someone guilty of a crime. This overturned previous decisions and made the process better. Desegregation efforts through busing were upheld by the Supreme Court in the 1971 case Swan v. Charlotte Mecklenburg Board of Education, promoting school integration. However, interpreting the Constitution and its application to minority rights remains contentious, with varying perspectives among different court compositions. The era when discriminatory Jim Crow laws were in place, the United States was a dark time with a lot of segregation and discrimination based on race. These laws enforced a system of racial inequality, denying African Americans basic rights and opportunities. However, brave individuals and landmark court cases gradually dismantled these unjust practices, paving the way for greater equality and civil rights. Understanding this period is essential to appreciate our progress and the ongoing struggle for social justice. Thank you for joining us. Please click the like, subscribe, and share buttons if you found this video helpful.